Today, as we send out our graduates into the world, let us begin by recognizing with our deep gratitude retiring faculty who have served our college long and well. Eugene Klotz, Albert and Edna Pownell Buffington Professor of Mathematics, Jean Marisek, William R. Keenan Jr. Professor of Psychology, Robert Pasternak, Edmund Allen Professor of Chemistry and Biochemistry, and Stephen Piker Professor of Anthropology. We also offer our most heartfelt and warm wishes to the members of our staff who are retiring this year, including Sally Colts from Public Safety, Edward Fuller from the McCabe Library, Bonnie Gasparetti from Payroll, Anna Harris and Nancy Hunt, each from Environmental Services, Linda McClowski from Advancement Operations, and Eileen McEnroe from Religion. Collectively, these dedicated staff members have provided 145 years of Swarthmore. Please join me in thanking these individuals. <laughs> Class of 2010, today is a great day of celebration. This beautiful amphitheater is filled with family and friends, faculty and staff, alumni, neighbors, and distinguished guests who are all here to celebrate your graduation from, well, the finest college in the land. Congratulations. In the four years that you have been hard at work here on our campus, the world has been rocked by plunging economic markets and the threat of two pandemic diseases. Just this past year, major earthquakes in three different parts of the world have devastated each of the countries in which they've occurred. But the news hasn't been entirely bleak during your tenure. Two years ago, we witnessed, and many actively participated in, the election of our country's first African-American president. <laughs> who has since appointed the first Latina justice of the Supreme Court. And this past year brought the passage of a health insurance reform bill that was 100 years in the making. Your contributions to the Swarthmore community have been many. On this campus, you have founded new cultural groups, such as Friends of Taiwan, Swarthmore Organizations for Israel and for Han, Swarthmore Women of Color Collective, and Students for a Free Palestine. You have experienced the opening of David Camp Hall, the relocation of the Eugene M. Lang Center for Civic and Social Responsibility to Whittier Place, and the installation of the new telescope in the Van de Kamp Observatory at the Science Center. You have led our way, the way, in our sustainability efforts. You have benefited from the addition of a loan-free policy and a new Islamic studies program. You've participated in a budget adjustment process designed to achieve financial sustainability while vigorously protecting financial aid academic excellence, and the livelihoods of those working on our campus. You have cultivated this community through intellectual and social engagement in the arts, athletics, wellness, politics, and from what I hear, parties. We celebrate your investment in the community. Today is not only a day for celebration, but also for a day of expressing gratitude faculty who have taught you, friends have engaged you, staff have helped you with housing, registered you for courses, advised you, fed you, cut the grass, and remember this, shoveled the snow, and assisted you when you were sick or faltering. Alumni, parents, and our endowment have made it financially possible for you to flourish in this intellectual and cultural hothouse. So for your parents, grandparents, siblings, relatives, friends, faculty, and staff members, 
who've been with you on this journey. Class of 2010, please rise and turn to your family and friends and express your gratitude by applause. Thank you. Celebration and gratitude infuse the spirit of this day and are joined by one more element, the commission to go forward. Commencements are, in a sense, a performative ritual in which this institution sends you forward to live in the world with the knowledge and values and commitments cultivated in this intense environment. For as much as we celebrate the past four years with you, we also bid you to live, fulfilling the obligation to serve the world even as you follow your dreams and passions. Swarthmore graduates invent new technologies, work in finance, build sustainable companies, write new laws, serve as principals of schools or presidents of universities. Swarthmore sends its graduates out to be lawyers, doctors, artists, business leaders, educators, scientists, engineers, nonprofit leaders, nurses, fashion designers, activists, and politicians. But we don't educate for any particular profession. We insist only that in whatever you do, you live out the values and commitments of serving the common good locally, nationally, and globally. By way of example, we are privileged this day to confer honorary degrees on two distinguished guests who are leaders in the sciences and education, and on two alumni who excel in the arts and community activism. Lest these remarkable individuals give the impression that success such as theirs is second nature to our graduates, please know that it isn't always easy to keep this Swarthmore sense of values and commitment alive. The rigor and competing demands of work and life will soon take effect. And you will encounter many others along the way with different experiences, values, and perspectives than those you met here. That is, of course, a good and necessary part of your continuing education, or as Romain called it, your perpetual learning. But never again will you flourish in quite this way, in the way you have experienced here in the incubator of ideas and commitments. So as we charge you to go forward this day, we also ask you to remember and renew and live as fully as you can what you have learned here. Specifically, we ask you to cultivate three distinct traits as you move forward to realize your dreams and ambitions. First, cultivate wonder. Who can stand in this theater of earthly beauty what Mark Wallace called yesterday this green chapel and not be filled with wonder. Indeed, who can have experienced four years at Swarthmore and not have had the mind-stretching, heart-leaping experience of interpreting a text in new ways, of discovering a new star, of producing a play or a dance, or succeeding in winning, after years of hard work, a race? Maxine Green, a renowned American philosopher of education speaks of wonder as wide awakefulness, as a continuous attitude of engagement and curiosity. Wonder and wide awakefulness also require knowledge in order for you to fully appreciate new realities. Understanding new language, arts, and politics of a culture fills one with wonder. Creating new ways to annotate music or discovering a new species of bacteria inspire the heart to hope. The physicist Victor Heiskopf was once asked what gave him hope in times of difficulty. His reply, Mozart and quantum physics, two of the many amazing things that 
inspire and cultivate wonder as well as hope. Genuine wonder and vigilant wide awakefulness have been a way of life for these four years. So let this quality persist and guide you as you chart your new course. Wonder should be coupled with critique for amazement, wonder, confusion, even awe should lead to explanation and understanding. Critical thinking is what you have mastered in this curriculum. You've learned to question your assumptions, to seek out voices in different perspectives, to unmask falsehood and uncover truth, goodness and beauty in all their forms. It is a hallmark of the alumni whom I have met this year that they have kept their critical thinking skills razor sharp and sensitively tuned. Your ability to think critically will help you in the professions, but if our investment in your education is to be fully realized, it will also be applied to critiquing and improving institutions and policies here and around the world. I hope you have become what Lucretia Mott, one of our founders, wished for all of our graduates, skeptical in all things, orthodox and dogmatic in none. Be vigilant, as were our founders, in respecting the line between skepticism and cynicism, especially in dealing with other people and in working to fashion a more just world. Wonder and critical thinking must be nurtured and practiced. The third quality that we ask you to cultivate is your imagination, the ability to see and create in new ways. While at Swarthmore, you have studied narratives and poetry in order to cultivate your capacity to imagine life differently. You've learned to dance and draw, to sculpt and perform in order to express new or different ways of being in the world. In the sciences and engineering, you have imagined your way to new insights and conducted experiments to produce new evidence. The social sciences have enhanced your ability to see the varied expressions of culture and politics and diverse ways of being human. Imagination learned across all the fields of study and through various cultural expressions broadens the capacity to innovate technically, socially, and artistically and is essential for shaping the future. Can you imagine new ways to solve problems in Chester, the Middle East, or our global economic system? Can you conceive, for example, of new relationships between psychology and engineering or new ways of advancing the disciplines of biology and mathematics. In 1939, during a lecture given at a symposium celebrating his 80th birthday, John Dewey spoke about creative radical democracy as the task always before us. And Dewey argued that the greatest threat to our democracy is the failure of intellectual engagement. Dewey emphasized throughout his career the importance of the imagination in the intellectual work of creating a more just democracy. As you face the task before you in your generation, do so as world citizens who must imagine new ways of living on this globe and who will have to discover new ways of sustaining this good earth. As you entered the amphitheater this morning, you passed a stone tablet engraved with words spoken by the then President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson, on Swarthmore's Founders Day in 1913. As you leave this space as Swarthmore graduates today, you'll pass those words again. Do not simply walk by them. Walk with them as you go into the world. And I quote, do not forget as you walk the classic places why you are here. You are here not merely to prepare to make a living. You are here in order to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world. And you impoverish yourself 
if you forget that errand. So as we send you along to shape our world, I urge you to take these three charges. Cultivate wonder, apply critical thinking in all of your tasks, and always imagine how the world can be different because of what you have learned here in this most extraordinary place. Congratulations, class of 2010.